Learning objective uh, includes a pH requirement for bacterial growth and osmotic pressure uh, for microbial growth. We already have discussed the third requirement, third physical requirement, uh, the temperature. Based on the, the pH, uh, pH could be alkaline, could, could be acidic. If it is less than 7 degree, we call it acidic pH or this is called acidity. And if it is uh, more uh, than 7, it is called alkalinity or alkaline pH. The pH basically is denotes hydrogen concentration. Why pH? A certain pH is needed for bacterial growth. It is because enzymes are pH sensitive. Um, enzymes that are uh, involved in metabolic and catabolic uh, pathways, they require certain pH for their optimal work. Mostly grow at a pH between 6.5 and 7.5. There are very few bacteria, mostly uh, bacteria grow between 6.5 and 7.5 pH, but there are very few that grow below uh, pH 4. So uh, keeping uh, pH low is another way of uh, food preservation. So pickles, uh, many cheeses, you know, that are not spoiled because when cheese is uh, made by microbial fermentations, a lot of acid is produced, and that brings the pH down. So it discourages the bacterial growth. Many bacteria, especially pathogenic, they really don't grow in these foods. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the uh, fermentation is a process by which um, many acids are produced, and those acids bring the pH down. So... Uh, what we call acidophile, uh, that like ac acidic pH, uh, molds and yeast, they like to grow under acidic conditions. And their optimum uh, pH requirement is uh, uh, 5 to 6. Although alkalinity can also inhibit microbial growth, but it is very rarely used as a food preservation technique. Now. When bacterial growth occurs in a, in, a, in a lab, for example, you are culturing microbes in a container, in, in a medium. And naturally, uh, when the bacteria would grow, it would utilize the, the food present in the, in the medium and would produce uh, various acids. And those acids, when they bring the pH down to certain degree, that low pH by itself uh, discourages any further bacterial growth. So in order to keep the bacteria growing in the medium, we have to provide some means of buffering the pH. And those buffers, um, they maintain the pH. Then, uh, like peptones in the medium that we use uh, in the growth medium, that peptone and amino acids and proteins, they can act as buffers. And we can add certain salts like PBS, Phosphate buffer saline is an example of a buffer. So they, they, these substances could be added if we want to maintain uh, growth for a longer time. A second uh, requirement uh, is uh, uh, the osmotic pressure. As we earlier saw in our previous lecture, one of previous lectures, that um, osmotic pressure is basically, uh, there are three types of osmotic pressures. One is called isotonic um, pressure, which is the same pressure as the cells have within them. So if the, these cells, these bacteria, they are placed in a, in a solution, like in a, in a liquid medium, for example, for growth, if the medium is isotonic, these uh, cells would not be impacted badly. They would live very happily there. But on the other side, or other hand, if the solution is hypertonic, it has more osmotic pressure than the osmotic pressure uh, present within the cell, then the, the, this would create a condition called plasmolysis, lysis of the plasma. So plasma would press because the water would get out of the cells and the cell would shrink like it would appear like something like this. And this technique where we use hypertonic solutions or uh, like salting, this te technique, salting, can also be used for discouraging bacterial growth by the, the process of plasmolysis. If, on the other hand, we keep our bacteria in a solution that is hypotonic, 
So the osmotic pressure is less outside the cell than within the cell. What would happen is that the water, because water concentration around the cell is more, it will uh, go or move into the cells. As a result, the cell would swell up and would burst, causing the lysis of the cells. So the requirement for microbial growth to occur in the lab is that the solution should be isotonic with respect to the cells. There are uh, microbes, what we call them extreme halophiles, that they like um, to grow under high salt conditions or concentrations. We can categorize these halophiles as obligate halophiles, that it is must that we provide uh, around about 30% salt concentration. They like to grow only when this much salt concentration is there. Then there is another category, what we call facultative uh, halophiles. Facultative means optional halophiles. Basically, um, they are halophiles. They like to grow if salt is present in more concentration. But if the salt is in low concentration, they don't mind to grow as well. So they can grow under low salt concentration, like 2%. But uh, if there is more, more salt available, they still can grow. And they grow happily. So that is why they are called facultative halophiles, they're optional. So they can grow at both these um, concentrations, low concentration of salt or high concentration of salt. In summary, most bacteria like to grow between 6.5 to 7.5 pH. We use buffers for maintaining bacterial growth in, in our lab. And osmotic pressure is also very important because it maintains the integrity of microbes.